How do I show a disappointed face? Hey guys, I'm Lou and in today's video I am going to be talking about why Star Daughter disappointed me. Before I actually get into the book review, I do want to say that like I acknowledge the importance of representation in this book. There's going to be so many readers out there who relate to the South Asian representation in this book and I personally think that the culture was the best thing about this book. It's just the book itself didn't meet my expectations and I'll explain why. This video will also contain spoilers about the book. Please also consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. So Star Daughter follows Chital, who is half human and half star. Think Neil Gaiman Stardust. As she gets closer to her 17th birthday, she starts to feel the pull of the stars more and more. It's so strong that Chital ends up losing control of her powers and gravely injuring her father in the process. An injury only a full star's blood can heal. Chital has no choice but to ascend to the sky and try to get her mother to help her. But her celestial family called her for a reason. She has to act as their human champion in a competition to decide the next ruling houses of the heavens. Desperate to save her father, Chital agrees. But nothing could prepare Chital for the discovery of the star's dark history. This book was one of my most heavily anticipated reads of 2020. I love the cover. I was really intrigued about the representation and the overall plot. I was also really happy to find out that this was going to be a fairy loop book because I was subscribed to them at the time that this book came out. I thought the plot was okay. The beginning was very slow in pace until about after the first 100 pages. The first 100 pages sets up Chital's human life, her family, her friends, her boyfriend and her struggles of being a half star. Then Chital accidentally hurts her father with her starfire and that's when she goes to the skies in search for a cure. She needs a four stars blood because of the fact that their blood can heal the damage a star does. Chital and her best friend Manal end up going to the stars and they arrive at the palace. Chital then gets emotionally manipulated by her family to participate in the competition to decide the next ruling houses of the stars. Well, house of the stars. I mean like, if you want to save your father, you must participate in this competition. If that's not like peak emotional familial manipulation, then I don't know what is. Most of the plot is spent on Chital's training and then the last 100 or so pages is focused on the competition and a tiny bit after that is the aftermath. In general, the book is slow paced, but it does pick up in the last 100 or so pages. I personally would recommend reading this book as quickly as possible to prevent yourself from DNFing if you wanted to read this book. I was really tempted to stop reading about halfway into the book and especially in the beginning because nothing really happens and it doesn't pay off as well. You learn a lot about these characters in the first 100 pages and then they never get seen again. Now, when you think about the competition to decide the next ruling house of the stars, what sort of competition do you think about? Do you think it'll be a battle to the death, a test of wits, a riddle, a free-for-all battle? The competition is a talent show. The royal houses pick a mortal to be their champion. The competitors are meant to be the best in their field, so like music, art, performance. Competition is that the competitors have an hour to produce their greatest work with the inspiration of their star. The mortal champion then gets world renown for their great artwork and then the royal house which sponsored the mortal champion gets to be the next ruling house. This competition disappointed me in two ways. Firstly is that I was expecting it to be a lot more exciting. I was expecting some sort of battle as opposed to a singing competition. A lot of the book is spent with Chital worrying about her performance and training to sing and of course it didn't make those part of the story that interesting to read 
I wasn't enjoying when she's like practicing singing because it's not really that interesting. <laughs> On top of that, I thought the whole idea of the competition being basically a talent show was beyond my suspension of disbelief because, okay, think about it like this. Britain's got talent, America's got talent, your country's got talent, all right? Imagine that the winner of Britain's Got Talent gets a lot of fame, like they do already, but then the mentor, so like Simon Cowell, gets to become the leader of the UK. Doesn't really sit well with me, it doesn't seem like a good idea to choose the next leader. Also, it doesn't mean that like Chatal's mother gets to be the new king, queen, emperor. It's Chatal's grandparents. Chatal does all this work, yes, to save her father, but it's like beyond that, there's no real reward. It's so much work for Chatal to go through <laughs> for one drop of blood. I mean, yes, she does help her father survive after injuring him but still I don't even know if her grandparents thanked her for it. I know why Chatal did it and I think you guys can understand why as well. It's just very disappointing. Chatal gets chosen by her house, her family, because she is half mortal so technically she can compete in this competition but of course it gives her an unfair advantage to the other competitors because they're all human. The mortal competitors aren't happy about this and they go out of their way to antagonize Chital, which to me lacked all common sense. Like I have no idea why these humans would go and do that. Don't they have any sense of self-preservation? They would either verbally or like physically abuse Chital. like one of them pushes her and I, like it doesn't make sense. Like she literally caused her father to have a heart attack and now he's in hospital dying. And yet these mortals are like, I'm gonna hit you. <laughs> like what? They must be complete and utter idiots. One of the reasons why like I criticize the writing about this aspect because it just like, it doesn't make sense. Chital literally has all the abilities of a star minus healing powers in her blood and she can't inspire mortals. But then all these humans are just like attacking her. It doesn't make sense for the humans to put themselves at risk. It would have made more sense if her human competitors completely avoided her or like betrayed her at the last minute. But for the mortals to antagonize Chital from the start, they risk not only like Chital hurting them, but like she is from one of the ruling houses. Her family has got a power, they're risking the wrath of her, but also her family. And none of the human competitors got penalised for it. I was waiting for literally divine justice. Nothing happened. It was really unsatisfactory to read. In terms of the characters, I do feel bad for saying this, but I didn't really like any of the characters. The characters will be memorable for me but only because of how much I disliked them. Like, I did mind Chital, but she was tiresome at times. Her best friend, Manal, was okay. I just thought that it would have made more sense for Manal to have been a star, because it doesn't make sense for Manal to accompany Chital to the stars when nobody knows if it's safe for humans to go to the star palace. Like, at the very least, Chital knows that she's going to be okay because she's half star. Manal didn't. Also, Manal disappeared quite a lot in the story, like she was doing her own thing in the star palace. And not once did she talk about her family on earth, she was just like there on vacation almost. I did like the fact that Manal had like a small fling with one of the stars. It was a female-female romance, but I do wish it was a more prominent part of Manal's story. Manal could be completely written out of this book and not much would change from the overall plot. Then there's Death. I really dislike Tim so much. He lies to Chital. The entire reason why Dev and Chital got together before the start of this book was because Dev had an ulterior motive. He knew that she was a half star and his cousin is a fellow competitor and he told Dev to go and befriend Chital. Dev gets upset when Chital rightfully distances herself from him when she discovers that he's been lying. And then Chital tries to blame Dev for the accident that happens 
to her father because like he was the emotional reason why she lost control of her powers but then Dev was like to her like it's not me it's not my fault which is like sort of understandable because Dev didn't cause Chital to lose control of her powers it was Chital herself but then not once in this conversation or like in later conversations was Dev concerned about her or her father he wasn't like you know are you okay are you mentally okay how's your father he's just like it's not a very nice thing to do to a girl that you supposedly love because they end up together in the end so like he must have had like true feelings for her yet he didn't care enough to ask about her feelings <laughs> but also in the actual story he's not physically present there a lot it's mainly Chital thinking about him missing him or being angry at him and then they get back together really quickly when it's Chital's 17th birthday he like does this surprise thing for her and gets her best friend Manal to help him it felt too much like a jump it wasn't a gradual progression it wasn't like Chital slowly melted to him it just felt like it was rushed there needed to be a happy romantic ending and that's why they got together before they got together though they essentially break up without talking and then Chital is like oh I want to do good in the competition I want Dev to hear my singing voice and it just felt like Chital did not deserve Dev especially with how he treated her and how he was acting and I personally didn't feel any chemistry between Chital and Dev I just I wasn't feeling it I was not invested the rest of the characters in this book they weren't developed like sure we were given like random facts about their backgrounds but I felt like I didn't really know them they lacked agency we didn't really know what motivated them you might have guessed i didn't like the romance <laughs> most of the reasons i've already said i just felt like this book would have been a lot better had the romance died after chital discovered dev's betrayal it would have been so much better if it didn't have to have a romantic happy ending i do understand why the romance was included though it allows the readers to relate to like asian parents not allowing their children to date and i understand why the romance was included in the beginning because it is an instigator for chital losing her powers and then the romance slightly helps out in the competition but it's really hard for me to get on board with a romance where i like dislike the characters and felt like they would have been better off separate rather than together and also like at the end of the book dev is the winner he's the one that gets like world renown and i'm just like you didn't deserve it especially with how you treated chital one thing i did love about this book which i have mentioned before was like the world building and the inclusion of hinduism like i personally don't know that much about hinduism but i did like the way that it was included in this book and i do think that part was done well and that it will inspire a lot of south asian readers which is really important. Overall I gave this book three out of five stars. This book was an average young adult read and I did end up reading this book more to finish it rather than me enjoying it. I was really struggling to read it in the beginning and it wasn't until I decided to like sit down and read the book in one day that I actually like forced myself to finish this book. The Desi representation in this book is incredibly important and I know a lot of readers will relate to that in some ways this book is not aimed at me and i accept that i just didn't like quite a few aspects of this book i thought that this book was a decent debut novel it could have done with a few more drafts <laughs> there clearly was potential in this book it just wasn't fulfilled in the way that i hoped it would be and i also know one of the reasons why this book disappointed me so much was because it was one of my most anticipated reads of 2020. maybe i should just like not have any expectations when i go into books but it's really hard to do so. i am definitely intrigued to follow the author and see what she publishes next. so that was my review of star daughter. i hope that you guys enjoyed this video. don't forget to like and subscribe and i hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.